Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to do some examples of inverse functions with both graphs and tables. So we're going to jump right into the examples. First, I'll ask which tables represent one-to-one -one functions, and it'll give us three tables here. So I have table A, table B, and table C, and these have X values as inputs and Y values as outputs. So in order to tell if these are one-to-one, -one, we want every input to have only one output and every output to have only one input. So this means that A represents a function. Now I wanna check for one-to-one. -one. So now I look at the outputs and I wanna make sure that every output corresponds to only one input. But I'm seeing that seven shows up as an output twice. So it corresponds to the inputs of negative three and five. So this means that A is a function, but it's not one-to-one. -one. And that's because this output of seven has two inputs that correspond to it. All right, next let's look at table B. So first I check to see if it's a function. I see that all the inputs show up only once. So this means that every input will have only one output. Now I wanna check for one-to-one. -one. So I look at the outputs. I wanna make sure every output has only one corresponding input. Since each output shows up only once, this means that there's only one input that corresponds to it. So here I would say yes, B is one-to-one. -one. Every output has only one input, and also every input has only one output. Okay, lastly, let's look at table C. First, I can check that this is a function. Every input shows up only once, and so it has only one output. But when I check for one-to-one, -one, I'm looking at these outputs. I see that the output of negative three shows up twice, so it has two different inputs, the input of three and eight. Both correspond to the output of negative three. So even though C is a function, it is not one-to-one, -one, and that's because that output of negative three has two inputs. All right, so now that we've identified a one-to-one -one function, let's use table B to answer some more questions. So let's call B my function F, so f takes in an x value and gives us a corresponding y value, or f of x value. And let's answer the following questions. I want to find f inverse of 2, f inverse of 0, f inverse of f of negative 2, and f of f inverse of 1. So starting with f inverse of 2, the inverse function looks at the outputs of our original function and asks, which input corresponds to the output of two. So I look in my output column and I find two, and I see this corresponds to the input of negative nine. So F inverse of two is negative nine. All right, next I do F inverse of zero. So this is saying which input gives me an output of zero on my original function F. So here I find zero as an output, I see that it corresponds to an input of negative one, so my solution is negative one. So for these, I just like to really make sure I'm remembering which column I'm looking for for which function. So if we're looking at the inverse function, an input to the inverse function is the y value of the original function. So I'm looking on that right-hand column. Okay, let's do two more. So now we're doing composition, so we have two functions to look at. So here we're doing f inverse of f of negative two. So I wanna start on the inside with f of negative two. f of negative two starts with an input of negative two and finds the corresponding output. So this is sort of back to our original way of evaluating functions. So the input of negative two corresponds to negative four as an output. So f of negative two is negative four. Now I'm looking at f inverse of negative four. So f inverse of negative four says which input gives me an output of negative four. So negative four as an output corresponds to negative two as an input, and so negative two is my solution. Now you might notice when we're doing the inverse composed with the original function, so f inverse of f, we should just get back where we started. So we started with negative two and I got out negative two. So when we look at the next question, the same thing should happen. So here I'm doing the function and its inverse, and so we should just get one as our solution. But let's just double check. 
So f inverse of 1, that means we're looking at a y value of 1, and we want to know which input corresponds to it. So f inverse of 1 is negative 10. So now I'm left with f of negative 10. I've done that inside part. Now f of negative 10, negative 10 is an input to the function f, and we see that it corresponds to 1 as an output. So f of negative 10 equals 1. And there we go. We got 1, which is where we started from. So what I just want to show here is that when we take a function and compose it with its inverse, it's effectively not doing anything to the value. We talk more about this in another video, but I just wanted to comment on it here. Then before we move to another example, I just want to talk about the domain and range of the function f here and its inverse. I see that the domain of my original function is negative 10, negative 9, negative 7, negative 2, negative 1. So these are just my input values. And then the range is the corresponding output values. I'll order them from least to greatest. So negative 4, negative 3, 0, 1, 2. Now when we look at the inverse function, what I'm going to do is make us a table that represents the inverse so we can see what's happening. So to do that, I'm going to take my two columns and swap them. So my original function had x as input and an f of x or a y value as an output. Those output values become the new inputs for my inverse. So my input column for the inverse are y values. And then I get a corresponding f inverse of y or x value that goes with it. So I've just taken the two columns and swapped them and then labeled them appropriately. So when we look at the domain and range here, the domain and the range should switch. So here in the range of the inverse is negative 10, negative 9, negative 7, negative 2, negative 1. And the domain of the inverse, f inverse, are negative 4, negative 3, 0, 1, 2. So you can always do this without creating the new table. We just know that the domain and the range switch when we start looking at the inverse function. Okay, let's move on to an example with graphs. So I'll show us two graphs, and we want to answer which graph represents a one-to-one -one function. So I have a line and a parabola here, and let's start with the line. So first, let's check if it's a function. This is the vertical line test, so I make sure every input has only one output. This passes the vertical line test, so this is good. And we should know this since we're aware that lines or linear functions are functions. Now we want to check if it's one to one. So this is where we use the horizontal line test. We're making sure that every output value has only one corresponding input. So this should mean that the horizontal line touches the function in only one location at every point. So as we move that horizontal line, it should intersect the function at at most one location which I'm seeing happens here. So we would say, yes, this is a function and it is a one-to-one -one function. Now let's move to the parabola. So first we can be confident that this is a function. So as we do the vertical line test, the vertical line is intersecting the function in at most one location. So every input has only one output. So we do have a function, but now let's check to see if it's one-to-one. -one. So we do the horizontal line test, and I'm seeing pretty quickly that this is failing the horizontal line test. So that horizontal line is intersecting the function in two spots. So many of these outputs have two corresponding inputs, and that's not good. That means this is not one-to-one. -one. So this means it won't have an inverse that's also a function with the way it's currently defined. So this is a function, but it's not one-to-one, -one. And it's not one-to-one -one because many outputs have multiple inputs. Okay, but let's take our line and answer some questions about it using inverses. So let's evaluate the following for y equals k of x, and that's where I'm calling this line the function k. So let's evaluate k of 0, k inverse of 5, k of k inverse of negative 3, and for what values of y is k inverse of y equal to negative 1? Okay, so starting with k of 0, this is just function evaluation like we've done it before. So 0 is an x value, and I want to find the corresponding y. 
I see that the corresponding y is negative 1, and so k of 0 is equal to negative 1. Now let's do k inverse of 5. So here 5 is a y value, so we're looking for which x value corresponds to 5 as a y value. I see that x equals 3 gives a y value of 5, and so the solution here is 3. k inverse of 5 equals 3. So for these, I just like to think about whether I'm using an x value or a y value that I'm starting with, and then what my solution should be, either an x or a y value. All right, now we have k of k inverse of negative 3. So we start on the inside here with k inverse of negative 3. This means negative 3 is a y value, and I want to know which x value it corresponds to. So I see negative 3 as an output, corresponds to negative 1 as an input or an x value. So k inverse of negative 3 is negative 1. Now I want to do k of negative 1. So I look at negative 1 as an x and see that it corresponds to negative 3 as a y. So the solution here is negative 3. And this should make sense. If we take a function and compose it with its inverse, we're basically undoing what we already did and so we should get back where we started. So we started with negative 3, and we got negative 3 as our answer. All right, lastly, let's answer for what values of y is k inverse of y equal to negative 1. So here, k inverse takes in a y value and gives us an x value. So negative 1 is an x value. This means we'll find negative 1 as an x and see that it corresponds to y equals negative 3. So this means k inverse of negative 3 is negative 1, and so negative 3 is our answer. All right, so I want to just finish by repeating some similar examples with our other graph. So we started with a parabola, but we said this wasn't one-to-one, -one, so what I'm going to do is just take half of the parabola so that it is one-to-one -one and passes both the vertical and the horizontal line tests. So let's evaluate the following for j of x, where j is my half of a parabola shown here. So let's find j of 2, j inverse of 4, j inverse of j of 4, j inverse of j inverse of 0, and answer for what values of y is j inverse of y equal to 2. So starting with j of 2, 2 is an x value, and I want to find the corresponding y value. So I see that 2 corresponds to 3, and so 3 is my answer. Then for j inverse of 4, 4 is now a y value, and I want to find the corresponding x. So I see 4 corresponds to an x of 1, so 1 is my solution. All right, now we have j inverse of j of 4. So since we know that inverses and the functions sort of undo each other, we're expecting to get 4 as the answer, but let's just go through it anyway. So starting with j of 4, 4 is an x value, and we see the corresponding y is negative 5. So j of 4 is negative 5, which becomes our new input. Now we have j inverse of negative 5. Here, negative 5 is a y, and I want to find the corresponding x. So I see that negative 5 corresponds to 4 as an x, and so 4 is our solution, as we expected. All right, now we have j inverse of j inverse of 0. So here we don't have the function and its inverse being composed. We have the inverse happening twice. So our answer is probably going to be something other than 0, but we'll have to see. So we start on the inside. We do j inverse of 0. Because we're using the inverse, that 0 is a y value, so I look at 0 on the y, and I see it corresponds to 3 as an x. So j inverse of 0 is 3. This means I need to now find j inverse of 3. So again, the inverse function takes a y value, so 3 is a y. I see that the 3 as a y corresponds to 2 as an x. So j inverse of 3 is 2, meaning that 2 is our answer. All right, and lastly we have, for what values of y is j inverse of y equal to 2? So, since the inverse takes in a y value, its outputs are x values, and so 2 here is an x. 
So we want to take 2 as an x and see which y it corresponds to. I see that y equals 3 is my solution, and that's because j inverse of 3 equals 2. And there we go. So those are some examples of evaluating inverses using tables and graphs. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.